What's up, everybody? Michael Silva here. You're watching the Daily Stock Market Brief. Today's date is November 9th, 2020. I'm out here on vacation in Arizona, sitting inside of a parking garage outside of a mall. Figured I'd have to make one of these somehow today and get it out to you at a reasonable hour. So that is what I'm doing. I'm going to keep today's video short because of the current circumstance. We're going to be going over indices and indicators today. I'll get more into the commodities, yields, the dollar on another video, but I just wanted to get this out just to look at some key levels and kind of give you my thoughts as to what's been going on in the markets. With all that said, let me just go right into it. We're going to first start off by looking at the indices themselves. And right now, as you can see, overall, really strong day. The NASDAQ composite down 1.53%, but the NYSE up 392 points, the SPX up 1.17%, and then the Dow Jones is up 2.95%. Now I don't have the Nasdaq 100 on here, but we got the we got the composite on here and we'll be going over that chart here shortly, but let's take a look at the sectors and as you can see here the sectors the one that really stood out to me today and probably everybody up 14.28% the energy sector. Now what's interesting about this is the energy sector, we've been saying that hey, the energy sector is going to have great opportunities. Now, I don't know if this is the necessary opportunity as of right this moment, but I'll show you the chart that kind of led me to believe this and previous, you know, posts on Twitter, so forth that we talked about. The next one down there is financials and financials seems pretty interesting to me, which we'll get into one of those charts as well. But here's the XLE over the SPY. Now, this is basically when it goes down, that means the SPY is technically doing better than the energy sector. When it's going up, that means the energy sector is, um, relatively stronger than the SPY. And what we mapped out a while back was this positive divergence in both the MACD and the RSI. And still, as you can see, we're seeing some strength right here, like we had already today was the up 14% day in the energy sector. And we're getting that little spike. Is this going to turn into something bigger? Maybe, but we can't really jump the gun right here and actually say that. Now, if you're wondering where I post some of this stuff intraday, I have a website, figuringout.money. I do a market dashboard, so I post charts intraday there, as well as you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I highly encourage you to do so if you want to see uh, more intraday chart updates and just a bunch of random shenanigans here. Let's get into the indices. So overall, man, this market has been just something else, right? Just gap, 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 gap. But yet they've done this previous months, right? In September to October, we had all kinds of gaps and then they got filled on the way down. Same here in August, all these gaps on the way up and then we've been getting filled on the way down. So is this a big false breakout? Well, it's too early to tell, but this type of candle right here really represents a large reversal type candle. You can call this a shooting star, this big gap up rocked all the way to 36.50 and then got rejected down. I got to update these gaps, but clearly it filled this gap here from September to make an all-time record high. It reached up into those levels and then got quickly rejected up in this range. Now, as you can see, I have the Bollinger Bands overlaid. This is why I personally went short today. Um, I already got out of the position. I posted on Twitter my... Um, it was a quick It was a quick little scalp trade. I mean, maybe about 30 minutes to an hour that I was in it and came up about 35% on this. But the reason why I knew and felt comfortable with doing this, even on a big green day, was because of how overextended we were on some of the lower time frames and also at, over the Bollinger Band. So it made sense to me, hey, being this overextended from the 5 EMA, okay, that's not typical. 5 EMA, it gets tagged very frequently. So when we get overextended, we get pullbacks back into it. And what we're seeing here is just these monster gap ups through the overnight sessions. And then we got rejected, creating a shooting star, my pullback here. Now keep in mind, this doesn't mean we're gonna crash down to these bottoms and fill all these gaps. It's very possible that that happens, but we need to keep the possibility that, hey, it might come down to retest this trend line or this 5 EMA, and we might see potential bounces from that point. Below us is the VIX, and this was the VIX chart that I posted, I think a market brief ago or two, but I put this red box up here as an area of resistance. We came into it. Clearly now we have that inverted hammer is getting rejected right up in there. So it was just kind of all aligning for us today as far as this big move to the upside where we said, yes, it has the option to run, some of our indicators weren't showing complete overextension. So, you know, it, it, it all makes sense that we could see another day like this. Now, I don't know if we're going to start seeing a pullback now, personally. Um, it makes sense given how far extended it is, but we need to wait for confirmation to be certain. Here's the NASDAQ 100. This is pretty nasty. We 
obviously gapped up here. We came into the previous um, window of the September high. This was the all-time high, and we got quickly rejected. This right here is a, just a monster bearish engulfing candle taking out the last previous two days. Looks like it wants to come close this gap right below us and potentially even more, but this was right all, all together. This one is a big false breakout to the upside and then close back within this channel. So people that were buying up here on this large wick right up here, you know, clearly got trapped into this and hopefully, you know, they got out and they honored their stops. If not, they're just holding holding on to hopes and dreams right now at this particular point in time. However, what I'd like to point out is it came back and is pretty much sitting on the 5 EMA. This could represent a potentially overextended move and we might potentially even have the ability to see a bounce from this point, believe it or not. But the 5 EMA, it was so far overextended, it needed to get re-tagged and it looked like it just did that. Now we got to just kind of play with caution to see what comes next. Right here is the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones, another just um this is a just a this is probably a record gap up right here um to an all-time record high and as you can see it's very similar we gapped through the resistance in the overnight session created a large shooting star the, the dow jones swung 1400 points today so absolutely incredible day but then you know to the untrained eye you might be looking at a computer like wow we've got 800 points today this is really good for the stock market but then you look at the chart and it's like just all these air pockets on the way up and then this big shooting star so a little scary very extended from the 5 ema wouldn't be surprised to see some continuation to get that re-tagged as from that point we got to kind of play it by ear but this does not look good neither does the rut the russell 2000 we're looking at the iwm false breakout just a huge bearish reversal type candle uh interesting to see what's going to play out here we're coming in to fill this um previous gap up obviously and then into the line of previous resistance we had this rising wedge drawn out this could very well be just a false breakout clearly bearish divergence there bearish divergence there it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out this particular point in time we need to see some consolidation or some just momentum continuation because right now we can't have just monster gap ups in one direction and this crazy amount of moves um, either up to the downside we need we need to see some patterns form we need to see some consistency here here is the krx now like i said i'm not gonna be talking about yields on this particular market brief um, but the yields just so you know had just a blowout day today and when yields go up guess what guess who performs well well the banks do really well because banks borrow short term and they lend out long term so when yields are up they can make more profits now that was only one day and this could be on the whole vaccine news but we had this inverse head and shoulders we had the ascending triangle and clearly we just had this monster move to the breakout side above the 200 period can we get continuation very possible but keep in mind there's some resistance up ahead in this area so we'll see um really how this one plays out here in the near future let's look at some of the indicators here indicators the first one I want to start off with the VIX. We had the inverse head and shoulders. We busted out of it, but then we got rejected. Now what I'm looking for is one, we have this gap below us still. I don't know if it's going to be able to reach down this far. We created a nice hammer candle here and we didn't quite get overextended to the bottom Bollinger Band, but I would be keeping an eye on this for it to potentially reach down into there and stretch if it has its legs to do so. Because sometimes when we get overextended moves on the daily time frame on the Bollinger Bands, it's likely to see a couple day reversal take place. And if it's in an overextended RSI and it's overextended on the Bollinger Bands and other indicators and charts line up, that could give us a really good probability for a positive trade. This right here is the NIMO. The NIMO we've been talking about, the McClellan Oscillator, and how it looks so similar how it did in 2018 to how it does right now, where you had this, you know, all-time record high, and then it went down, up, down, up, and then you had this all-time record high, and it went down, up, down, up. Now, the only thing that we haven't seen play out is this big spike to the downside, where you get this crazy, just negative breath in the markets, and you know we're right here on that last up move and it's very possible because of how the chart is setting itself up with all the gap ups right and the shooting star it's possible that hey we might be seeing something very similar take place here where we see the negative breath and then a move lower into where i've been saying this 3000 to 3100 um definitely possible to reach down to 3200 but we have to you know play it day by day and see where it goes see where the technicals are see where the indicators are and so forth but right now this is setting very similarly up this doesn't mean it's probable going to happen 
It doesn't mean it's a higher probability, I should say, but it means that it could be very well possible. So we need to be prepared for that possibility. Um, here's another indicator that I want to pull out. This right here is just the OEX, the S&P 100, the big techs, big tech stocks. So just the, the just the big stocks there that make up the S&P 500, and this is just the 100. But below us is the CPCE, and it's on the daily time frame. CPCE is the a sentiment indicator. It's the put to call ratio for the equity side of things. And as you can see, they're all so, so bullish right now. And it hasn't been this bullish for quite some time, but it's something to take note of because if, when people are so bullish, sometimes you can use this as a contrarian view and flip um, reverse. Now, I inverted this scale. So you'd be like, well, it's supposed to be lower. Well, the only reason why I'm doing that because it's easier to read if I invert it. So we're at, um, actually, I can't even see where we're at, but it's like 0.4. Um, so we're probably at 0.38, somewhere around there. As you can see, last time we were at these levels was that all-time market high. And then what had happened, it pulled down. We were here, pretty high up there. And then boom, pulled down. Over here, pretty high, pulled down. So this could be setting itself up for that, fill some gaps below us. But keep in mind, a lot of been crazy things have been happening in the aftermarket scene. So, you know, we just need to play this day by day and be very careful shorting into this type of market we need to look for major areas of support and so forth i don't personally plan on holding anything um at least short positions at this particular point in time overnight just because i've just seen what's been taking place but just to wrap it all up as far as the conclusion goes you need to be very agile in this current environment we've been seeing monster gap and gap and gaps now we're starting to see a little bit of weakness however that weakness has not been confirmed yet Okay, so it was still a good day unless, you know, we're talking about the NDX, the NASDAQ 100. So we need to see confirmation take place before we start getting crazy. This is the type of market environment that you do not want to be complacent. So if you had the benefit of running up these last five or six trading days to the upside, make sure that you're taking some profits off the table and adjusting your stop losses. It's not the time to get greedy because gre uh, because pigs, how they say, quote unquote, this I forget how the quote goes, but you know, pigs go to the slaughterhouse. So don't be, don't be greedy here. Um, if you are in the green, you need to be very careful and very aware that things could turn very quickly, even in the overnight session. So, um, yeah, look out for tomorrow. I'm going to be updating the market dashboard and I'll try to make, um, a more intense, you know, I'll bring in some more charts for my daily market brief, but, um, Regardless or not, I'm glad that I was able to get it out to everybody here. So everyone have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you all later. Bye.